Hello everyone and welcome back to the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast. Hope you liked my way too early fantasy basketball mock draft. I did because, like I said before, it's Luka Mania, guys. <laughs> Can't get over that guy. But rounding out the show should be another interesting fantasy basketball segment. We transition from mock drafts to kind of a sadder one because as we're winding down the fantasy basketball season, it's kind of a review of how it went. We're going to be talking about the MVPs and LVPs, the unsung heroes and disappointments, like I said before the break, of fantasy basketball this season. We've talked a lot about some of these MVPs, but not necessarily these LVPs, so I'm really excited to talk about them. So without further ado, I do have a graphic for you guys today. Let's get right into it. So as you can see, as these players pass across my screen, you have a very diverse list for both. You have guys who... Maybe if they stayed on the court, could be top 20 or so fantasy players, in my opinion. But you also have guys who kind of have been the unsung heroes, and you expect them to be. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Starting off with the MVPs. The number one projected fantasy basketball player, as he flashes across my screen for next year, Victor Wembonyama. Wemby, number 15 pick in ADP as a rookie. That's absolutely incredible. It just goes to show you how much hype is surrounding this young man as he acclimates to the NBA. And I think he acclimated just fine. He was a top 10 player in points format scoring for fantasy. Ultimately, though, I do think, as, as crazy as it is to say, he does need a little room for improvement. Obviously, he's not the bulkiest of guys, so if he bulks up, I do think he will improve. He can get more physical then he'll be able to get even more rebounds, and he might even be at Jokic Luka levels in terms of production should he decide to improve his physicality in this offseason. And also, I think that there are questions surrounding whether or not Greg Popovich is the right coach to kind of elevate his style of play. I think that Greg Popovich has done a fantastic job with the Spurs over the years, but it is a new NBA And it's ever-evolving, and Greg Popovich right now has not proven that he can evolve with it. You have seen older coaches kind of accept the fact that they need to transition to the more modern game, like Rick Carlisle, that's the main reason the Indiana Pacers got as far as they did, Tom Thibodeau even. So I think that Greg Popovich might hinder Victor Wembanyama should he stay for a little bit longer, but Victor Wembanyama ultimately... It is up to him how he wants to progress. I think his mindset right now was just, okay, seeing the level of play in the NBA, the physicality of it, and how he can become better. And if he does, it's a scary proposition for the league. Right now, he's on a Spurs team that's just trying to piece together a semblance of a squad that can compete in a very crowded Western Conference and Victor Wembanyama is just a small part of it right now, but he's going to be a huge part of it as the as it progresses. And so I'm really intrigued to see if Victor Wembanyama is willing to put in the work to become maybe the number one fantasy basketball player, as many people project next season. But moving on to, come on, this guy just keeps on showing up. He just keeps on showing up. Luka Doncic. What more can we say about this young man that hasn't been said before? You guys are probably sick and tired of hearing the name Luka Doncic over and over again on this show. But you just have to accept because he's that damn good. Just averages so many points. 33.9 points last season. 9.2. Rebounds 11.8 assists. Jeez. 49% from the floor. Just an absolutely incredible fantasy player. And when all is said and done, like I said last segment, he is so good that he could join Dirk as the only two Mavs in the history of fantasy basketball to be in the top 10 of the greatest fantasy basketball players of all time. Luka Doncic is a no-brainer. You better hope you have the first, second, or even third pick if he falls that far in the draft because he's not going anywhere outside of the top five. He might go number one overall. I don't know. Because of how good he is in every single statistical category. But 
that's enough of the star players. How about a little love for an unsung hero on a, a L.A. Lakers team that kind of is so LeBron and Anthony Davis and media-centric that you forget about this guy and Austin Reeves as he pops up on my screen. Austin Reeves is just a fantastic utility player in my mindset. I think he's a guy who can come in off the bench and offer you production at every level, especially in terms of his point scoring. I think he's helped by the fact that he has that nucleus in LeBron and AD that really propels his style of play, really makes him more aggressive, and I'm loving how he's progressing. I think that there might be questions about his future. Um, if there's a new coach who doesn't necessarily see him as a fit for this LA Lakers team, I know it's crazy because he has signed a contract extension, and he deserved it in my opinion. But right now, I do feel that Austin Reeves is just getting a little bit overlooked, and in my mind's eye, is the MVP of the uh, past basketball season as one of those role players who can do it all. He does have a very low average draft position going into the 24 to 25 season. So he's one of those guys who, unlike a Wemby and Luka, who obviously are going to go very high, is going to fall, drown, fan fall down fantasy draft boards. People might forget about him because they don't necessarily think he's an uh, integral point guard in the league. But he certainly can be a fantastic sleeper pick, in my opinion. So do not sleep on Austin Reeves. Now let's transition to the sadder portion of this segment. The disappointments. The guys who, maybe if they saw the court a bit more, could have huge impacts. And let's start off with a guy who has caused controversy wherever he has gone in the NBA with Jordan Poole. Jordan Poole. He does have an average draft position of 28, so kind of in that mid-first to late second round uh, draft pick. So, But he was still outside the top 60 in points league's scorers for this past season. And in my mind's eye, I just don't see Jordan Poole as a factor anymore. He just lived off the hype of his season with the Golden State Warriors where they beat the Celtics in the finals. And after that, he was not heard of again. He was more known for getting punched by Draymond Green than producing on the floor. I think that Jordan Poole right now, in my mind's eye, is not even a factor. He's insignificant in my mind in terms of fantasy draft boards. And so I think he's very invaluable to fantasy boards. He doesn't necessarily add anything to them. Not even as a bench or role player anymore. I just think that he has fallen off that much and I don't see as bright a future as I do for the next two guys on this list as I do for Jordan Poole. Okay, next two guys on this list are two guys who I think could have bright futures in terms of both how they play in real life if they see the court more in both Ben Simmons and LaMelo Ball who just were seen as kind of like these nice little fantasy prospects. Obviously Ben Simmons is not a point scoring fantasy prospect. More known for his assists, rebounds, stuff of that nature. But LaMelo Ball certainly was as well. And so let's start off with Ben Simmons, obviously. This is the second back surgery he's undergone ever since joining the Nets from Philly. He has played just 57 minutes since he was traded and acquired by the Nets. So it just goes to show that Ben Simmons just cannot f seem to find a purple patch of health. He cannot seem to find a purple patch of where he's actually helping the Brooklyn Nets. Obviously, it did not work out. That whole kind of controversy with the whole Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, James Harden, all these players segueing in and out of the Brooklyn lineup. And Ben Simmons just being left there to kind of rot is kind of a sad thing to see because I do think Ben Simmons is one of the more interesting players. He is so efficient when he's on the court. He can provide so many unique stats and elements of fantasy that are so unexpected and yet he just cannot seem to find a purple patch of health like I said whereas LaMelo he was projecting to average 47 fantasy points per game he was sitting right at that tally and that's a fantastic mark for a starter level player on a fantasy squad but he only played 22 games last year 
LaMelo Ball is also on a Charlotte Hornets team that ultimately is can be exciting in spurts, but really are relying on LaMelo, so he is one of the preeminent point scorers in this league due to the fact the Charlotte Hornets mainly rely on him. But he just was not healthy last year. He just did not have a purple patch, but look for him kind of like the mid-second round in my opinion. I think that LaMelo Ball should be one of the more highly valued fantasy players next season. Let's just hope he stays healthy because he really is a special athlete when he's on the court. And I do think he is a starter level player in terms of fantasy should he have a full season of health. But that will just about do it for this segment. I really enjoyed kind of recapping the fantasy basketball kind of bittersweet moment in this kind of podcast because of the fact we're winding down on the basketball season and we're going to be getting into fantasy football as we saw this episode. But I was really excited about this show. I hope you guys liked it. Please remember to like, follow, and subscribe to the GSMC, both sports and podcast networks. It's a huge support. It is highly appreciated by all. So do consider that. Also, if you want to leave a tip or donation at the link gsmc.cloud, another huge support as well and greatly appreciated. But that should just about do it for this series of the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast. My name is Christopher Shepard. We'll be back tomorrow for another fantastic edition of this show.